on this, we join Michael Cox, who is in London. He's a professor at the London School of Economics. Michael, there's been some scepticism about how useful and productive this summit can really be, given the gap between the EU and China. What are your thoughts there, briefly? Well, summits serve a certain purpose, which is to get people together. This is the 24th summit they've held. Uh, it does indicate a slight improvement in the relationship. The relationship is critical economically for both sides. It's critical for questions such as climate change. However, although I, I feel that the, the relationship is going to continue, obviously, as we've been saying, the Europeans have been saying, and, and the Chinese, I think, reciprocate, there's a, there's a lot of competition in this relationship, even back in 2019. Remember uh, that uh, the European Union defined uh, China as a strategic rival. So it's on the one hand, but on the other. On the one hand, you've got to deal with each other, realistically speaking. On the other hand, I doubt very much whether this particular summit, like any summit, is going to resolve what I call the underlying basic differences on economics, on values, and indeed on China's relationship with Russia. At the summit, Xi urged the EU to eliminate all kinds of interference in the relationship. What did he mean by that? <laughs> well, uh, well it, it was a strange term, was it not? Uh, I, I suspect that what he's talking about really is the United States. I mean, there is a view in China that really the United States determines everything, shapes everything, and then anything, anything that happens in the world is because of the United States. And I think that they obviously believe, they, this is my reading of it, I may be wrong, that in essence, uh, the US should just keep out of, the, of this bilateral relationship between the EU and China. That is what I think they're hinting at. However, the, uh, the United States is not going to keep out of this relationship because it's closest allies and its closest economic partners with the EU, and they share certain political, uh, political similarities as well, being all liberal democracies. I assume that's what they're referring to. But this is the old line I think you get from China. It's a perfectly understandable and logical line that they want to really kind of keep European countries and Europe overall and the United States as far apart as possible. I actually do think that's a bit of a wishful, a wish, a wishful dream, actually. And Michael, just really briefly, you did mention Russia there. I just wonder how worried you think the EU and indeed the rest of the world needs to be in terms of those strengthening relations between Russia and China. Well, that relationship goes back to 2001. I'll be brief. And it was consolidated after 2014. It's, it's been there since 2022. A lot of people were thinking that China might, might distance itself from Russia during this war. It seems to me, at least, looking at it objectively, that that distancing has not taken place and that relationship therefore remains best and bosom friends, as they've called it themselves. And I just don't see any possibility of Russia and China separating. That, again, is another factor in the, in the, in the complicated relationship which continues between the European Union on the one hand and China on the other. It won't go away and it will remain, along with some of those economic issues, uh, areas of disagreement and competition. Michael Cox from London, much appreciated.